are back. We've got this short break between rounds, but we are getting super pumped behind the scenes here. I'm Matt Caver and Stephen White joining me once again. Mate, we're going to go over the first four rounds of this season, talk about how the series is going uh, since its inception this year, and, and let's have a bit of a look at Sydney Motorsport Park, because we're going there next as well in October. Yeah, fantastic. Looking forward to October, Sydney mm. Motorsport Park, but... You know, it's been the start of a fantastic series. Way back in March, it feels like forever yeah. now. Um, we're on a short break, but we're looking forward to Sydney Motorsport Park. Round one at Winton was obviously a huge success, and the series just growing and growing with momentum as we go along. Yeah, I think it was great to have over 20 cars there from the TA2 Muscle Car Series show up for round number one. And there was some, some really good racing there as well. We saw the fight between Jackson Rice and Lee Stibbs. And didn't that go down to the wide or the final race where they had that little bit of an incident in that final race coming into lap number three? But I mean, the racing all over, Josh Haynes with the fight back after having some early engine issues there with, with some temperatures down there. We, we think about how warm it was at the start of the year and everyone struggled a little bit with that. Well, I think the nature of the series has been that it's gone to warmer climates as we've gone along. Uh, but look, Winton was fantastic and we've had a little bit of controversy at every round, which, you know, that's fantastic for us to watch and exciting for the TA2 teams. Uh, Brad Gartner, unfortunately, seems to be the guy that had a couple of runs early that has been, had a bit of bad luck. But look, the Lee Stibbs... Jackson Rice incident in round one was quite significant. I think we all sort of forgot that Josh Haynes was coming through in that last race. And, uh, and then all of a sudden it's trounced by the Josh Haynes and Jackson Rice battle at the end of the, on the end, on last corner of the last lap of the last race. So uh, just a fantastic round, round one, a huge success. Obviously followed up with the Hyundai XLs that were there from Victoria, Australian Super TT that debuted. Uh, you know, all of those things that happened at round one were so exciting for the series and, and it, it was a great springboard for round two. Great to have the RX-8 Cup Series there as well, of course, all thanks to Yellow Express, of course. Um, haven't they really joined onto the series? We, we missed them in a, in a couple of rounds. They didn't come all the way to down for us around number two but we had them back strong at Morgan Park Raceway and uh, we're going to see them at Sydney Motorsport Park so got a great accumulation I suppose of race series now as we go towards the the back third of this series and I can't wait to see how it's all going to unfold but let's check out some of the highlights though from round number one at Winter Motor Raceway. And we are green final race of the day final race of the round boy it's a great drone shot if we get out of the turn one this looked better for Rice no stibs Oh, he ran wide there. Jackson will have a look at him up the inside. Under brakes, Pappas in trouble. Rice coming back at Stibbs as they work their way down into turn two. This is was ominous. It, was that Chalpo possibly? It's a Camaro from the back and it's white, but I'm not sure. And Hayden Jackson. Now Iron Gardner gets by Teb. I haven't seen Le Chalpo, Matty. It leads me to think that it was his car that had slowed. Maybe get past and try and challenge Jackson Rice. There is, he takes a dive on the inside through Bates and they take the right hand around a turn number nine. And wow. Haynes looks like he might have got that done. Will Bates be able to come back at him as they head into turn number 10? Parts plus dodge all over the back of Dylan Thomas. We can talk about being a train. Oh, no, Stibbs has spun around oh, here. Oh, no. Oh, that is devastating for Stibbsy. Hume again right behind Bates. It's exciting, Matt, when you look at the number of youngsters in this top 10, even. Super Series replay. There was a lock up there, wasn't there? There was the front there for Hume. There was a bit of a. Now, is that there that there's a problem with the car right there? There was once or twice there, and then. He did try to get around the outside. Yeah. Look like from Dylan Thomas. Trying to make a drive around the outside of Hollinger. So Graham Cheney would be pretty fired up. We didn't see. Did he go on his own, Matty, or did someone help him? Oh, it is on. Jackson Rice needs to be really careful here, Matt. The round win could go begging here. Oh, man, it's on like Donkey Kong. Final race of the weekend for the TA2 Muscle Car Series. Jackson Rice up against Josh Haynes. And we're going at it all the way to the end. You think Haynes wants this win? Oh! <laughs> Jackson's like, no! I want to go home and put an exclamation point on this. Last two corners. It has been a ripping race. Rice refusing to give in. Haynes on the outside. We're going to go all the way to the very end. The seven car of Rice 
look at Hayes. Look at him go back on the inside. Did he get him? I think he might. They're going to go side by side. Oh, Haynes! I think he's going to pull this off. What a finish. Haynes will get the win. My giddy heart. What a race that was. Well, you could see by the highlights, it was an exciting round number one. That that final corner there between Josh Haynes and Jackson Rice really set the tone for the series, didn't it? And then oh. we did something that I've never, ever seen in TO2 Muscle Cars. Round number two was up at Hidden Valley Raceway, which is a huge trek for the teams. But not only was it just for them, we brought co-drivers into it and had a two-driver enduro there. Yeah, first time in the world that that's been yeah. done for TA2 and, and they choose the hottest place on earth, it <laughs> felt like, to have two-driver event. I mean, look, what a fantastic venue, what a fantastic place. Hidden Valley was all about getting up there and experiencing it, but I don't really think you realise till you get there how exciting it is. Um, the first day was just the most amazing feedback from all the drivers that had got there. And, and look, the guys that had dropped in as, as co-drivers, well, there's no, you know, there's no slouches in there. We had some absolute stars jump into those cars, and and look, they, they were the TA2 drivers that follow the series are very lucky to get some fantastic co-drivers. Uh, Dylan Thomas probably being the uh, having the ace up his sleeve, if you like, yeah. with Tim Brook, but fantastic combinations that went up there. I think the most exciting thing about it was it was just another dynamic that added to this series. If we didn't think it could deliver, it delivers more and more every time, you know. So Hidden Valley was fantastic. Um, we must remember that Nathan Hearn came back over and was, and, and uh, due respect to Nathan, he jumped into the Peter Robinson Dodge and uh, just got going and got out the front there and had a great battle. He was joined by his New Zealand counterpart, Paul Manuel. Now, they had a bit of bad luck and there was a bit of contact and a bit of controversy at Darwin, which again, we seem to be a bit of a habit of, but wow, what a fantastic event. Again, supported by some great local categories, Hyundai XLs. We had our, our Australian, Super Tinta, Australian Super TT was there as well. Uh, and, and various other categories as well. Uh, the drifting dropped into it yeah. up there, top end drift. So it was a fantastic carnival event and you can't help but party in Darwin. But I've got to say, I think one of the most absolutely fantastic things of the weekend was standing on the pit wall and watching these cars fly by. I, I just don't think there was anything kilometre long straight. Uh, we won't see that anywhere else really. So fantastic to experience it over there. I think if you want to add to the excitement, one way to do it is we had King of the North. Of course, it was a, an accumulation of not only the single driver races, whether you had a co-driver or you didn't, you had single driver races every day, followed by an endurance in the afternoon. We did that over two days. It was a long weekend up there, so everyone was in a bit of party mode, but then we throw $20,000 prize money in there. And didn't the races get more and more exciting as the weekend went on? Because it got very, very serious. Now, the winner out of that was Dylan Thomas and Tim Brooks, of course, because they started out really well to start with. They won the races really early, the singular races. They did really well in the endurance on the Saturday. So then come Sunday, they just had to finish the race. The other thing to remember is that we had these other stars that dropped into cars like Jordan Cox. I mean, that guy just starred uh, in with Mark Crutcher. Um, uh, Josh Haynes again. Uh, he just keeps popping up. Fantastic effort from Josh. And he was really right on Nathan Hearn's tail there. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Earlier heats, uh, two parts of the Kings of the North and, and a fantastic final to wrap it up. But I mean, it was just a, a fantastic weekend all round, wasn't it? It just had everything. It had character about it. I mean, it was so hot up there. We found teams in cool rooms doing debriefs. Uh, people went and bought inflatable pools. <laughs> They're splashing around in the water, you know, during the racing, like between stints out there. And uh, I think watching the drivers have to swap in and out of the cars. They're not the easiest of cars to get in and out of. And when are we ever going to see that in TO2 racing again? Uh, well, look, uh, you know, I, I think we'll work on that for next year and, and beyond. But um, the other thing to mention up there uh, was a crowd favourite. The HQ Holdens were up there. They did a, they did the Crocodile Cup and they did their uh, Founders Cup up there. So they had a great time. And look, uh, you know, some of the TO2 drivers were actually <laughs> pretty fascinated with that race too because it had a lot of strategy in it. But yeah, wonderful event. Uh, and certainly uh, hats off to TA2. Um, because they put that format together and we were lucky enough for the Super Series to be able to put it on. So, yeah, fantastic. Let's have a look at some of those highlights now. As we go green here at Hidden Valley. Yeah, Lee, you see Tim Brook now. He's on the inside line, but following Gartner as well on the 22. He gets to the inside of Walker and they get through turn number one. There's two cars side by side. Oh, three cars. That made him a Keldon on the outside there. He's in the 
Kubota car there. They'll be trying to try and claw back some position. This, oh, no. McRow, McRow was just off track, so he just got guided off there off turn number one. So let's get through this first lap. Tim Brooks, certainly one of the quicker guys out there. That combination between him and Dylan Thomas has been very, very competitive out of the weekend. They are the points leaders for the King of the North title at the moment. On the inside, the number 50 car, Andrew Fisher there, driving that solid this weekend after Paul Hadley's had it. But here we go, Michael Rao in the background, the 15. Looks like he's just done that on his own accord, a bit too fast, maybe missing. Already a dive down the inside, and you'll go back and get back on the lead lap. So he's not going to muck around, Nathan Hearn. Very experienced race. He might be young, but he's over in America. He's had to deal with all the mind games over there. He's proven to them what a talent he is, and now he's back here racing at Hidden Valley Raceway. As you see, some cars in the background just getting out on the grass. Inside of three laps, and if the leader oh, no. hasn't done it, oh, there's contact, and away goes Stubbs into the tyre wall. He goes. I don't know if there was actual contact made, they just... Was that trick, that was triggered off in that sort of 8th, 9th, 10th area, but Stibbs was actually down a lap having pitted earlier on. Leading us at the moment, of course, is Jordan Cox in the Crusher Developments, number four. He's not going to be able to do enough, I think, to clinch that big $20,000 purse for the win this weekend. Josh Haynes behind him, but it's all eyes on the number 12, with Dylan Thomas and Tim Brook. Thomas now back in the car, and we believe if he can hold that position, he may become the king. He may get the crown. Jordan Cox coming around. He's halfway through his final lap. He's just got to get through these few corners. Josh Haynes, what a fight back from them. Teamed up with Nicholas Bates this weekend. And Graham Cheney and Ian Thornborough, too, in third position at the moment. They're still going to be happy about winning 35 laps to have to come out here. The cars are all scattered. Oh, no. Zach LaSharpo in the number 21 Temper Solutions car has stopped, but our winner crossing the finish line, Jordan Cox and Mark Crutcher in the Crutcher Development's Mustang will get the 35 lap endurance race win here this afternoon at the High Tech Oil Super Series. Josh Haynes in second, Eden Thornborough in third. We are waiting for the CXC number 68 to come across the line. They were in 12th at the start of the previous lap. It should be enough for them to win the overall King of the North title by our calculations. I think they'll be pretty comfortable with it. Some big drives through the field. Well, Darwin really had some fantastic racing, some, some really on the edge moments there when you throw some co-drivers in amongst the mix. Guys who haven't been in a TA2 car like Jordan Cox and what a phenomenal asset he's going to be. We've seen him in so many forms of motor racing and we just, fingers crossed, we'll see him return to the TA2 muscle car ranks. But we then went a, a bit further south, but it was still a bit warm. It was the, the middle of the year, it was the middle of our series and round three we went to Queensland Raceway, the paperclip where it's basically four drag strips with a few corners thrown in, but it's very technical there and we saw a lot of action happen on that turn number three. The beauty of the paperclip is you can see everything. So yeah. what we saw was some really great action packed racing. No doubt Nash Morris was dom dominant uh, and that's his home track really, you know, it's up the road from Norwell uh, and he did a fantastic job and really didn't put a foot wrong. Uh, professional, pretty much a clinical effort from Nash, you know, um, we had everything. We had, and it goes without saying, we had the Brad Gartner accident, um, which, which we all held our breath uh, when that accident happened. Obviously, uh, Brad's had a mechanical failure, uh, no brakes. Uh, and turning left into turn four or attempting to brake for turn four and straight ahead, uh, the car spun uh, and obviously he's gone backwards into the tyre wall and moved that wall some 15, 20 metres. I mean, it moved it a long way, but wow, what a testament to the, to the TA2 chassis, the how built chassis. Um, Brad's in the commentary box an hour or so later yeah. talking to Wade and telling him all about it. So, I mean, it, you know, absolutely fantastic to see that. Horrible to see the accident. Fantastic to see the recovery from Brad. So, um, look, uh, it hadn't been the best start for Brad, but gee, it was great to see that out of that. Josh Haynes, fantastic in the wet. Last race had started to rain just as the cars were starting to form up on the grid. Some of them took the choice of pitting, some of them didn't. And uh, if you like, uh, Nash was in first. Cleverly, obviously, uh, instrumental from Paul. And uh, I'd say there, and he was in and out and joined the back of the field and got going and cut through them with wet tyres. On Josh Haynes, Dylan Thomas decided to stay out. And they held on for some time and then the race actually came back to them, but it ran out of time. I think the most significant uh, appearance there was uh, Russell Wright. Uh, oh, wasn't it great to see him back? <laughs> he jumped in the Rob Leonard car up at Darwin and um, 
Here he was uh, reappearing again from whatever sabbatical he was having. He's reappeared in a beautiful car. And, and, and look, fantastic to see Rusty back back into the... I, think I reckon he dropped straight into the top ten. So, I mean, fantastic to see those sorts of stories happen through the series. Um, Russell, by his own admission... Probably got the bug again from Darwin, yeah. uh, and thankfully Robert giving him the chance to drive his car up there at Darwin as well. So, I mean, how great to see that. And, and I'm being absolutely respectful here, the elder statesman of our sport, mm. racing and amongst all these young kids that are doing a great job. But what a fantastic opportunity to do that, and fantastic to see those guys back. And it wasn't all about TO2 Musk car up there. We had the Queensland uh, production cars racing. Now, they did an endurance, actually, on the Saturday night. That, that went for quite some time because it was two endurance races with a little break in between, and yeah. it was under lights, and yeah. we could see the brakes glowing, and it was really competitive in that, too. So great to see them join us. And, of course, the uh, EFS 4x4 Hyundai Excel Series, the Australian Series, that kicked off. It's only got three rounds this year, very yeah. short one, but yeah. it started there in Queensland, and the numbers were everywhere. Fantastic racing. Uh, cars were three wide, four wide, sometimes five wide. Two corners from the end, you didn't know who was going to win. And particularly in the final. Um, yep, you're right about Queensland production cars. Uh, absolutely fantastic yeah. category. So well supported in Queensland. And it's so good to see production cars because it is where our roots from racing comes from. You know, to see those cars that you can buy in the showroom mm. uh, that are out there racing. They raced under lights, as you said, put on a great race on Sunday. Uh, we had the Australian Trans Am Championship there, so obviously the, the, the older Dodgers and, and Mustangs, etc. Uh, fantastic group of guys and, and a, a couple of old stages in there uh, that, 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 that uh, got the chocolate set. So, I mean, uh, uh, John English has been around motorsport for a long, long time. Ian Palmer that's involved in that category. It's great to see John get up and, and, and certainly John have a great run throughout the year when we've seen those guys and they'll be back for Sydney. Um, so yeah, a really action-packed event at Queensland Raceway, but fantastic to see it. And, and look, again, the TA2 cars turned it on, our headline act, but magnificent racing right across the weekend. And I think the facilities, really, the improvements that have been made in the last, you know, uh, 12 to 24 months there is just phenomenal when you when you don't go there for six months every time you show up there's a new building there's more shade there's you know, everything's been painted i mean tony's doing a fantastic job up there and really supporting motorsport magnificent facility queensland raceway it, it had the bones of it but tony's just taken it to the level that we all expect you know a professional mm. businessman like tony doesn't muck around just makes it happen and uh that's what i want to do and that makes it right and, and the reality is with tony is i think that because he is a racer he puts back into the sport because he knows what people look for. Value for money, but a place that's fantastic to come for not only yourself, but your family. I mean, they've got a magnificent corporate centre that they've built above the pit lane there. So, look, hats off to the guys at QR. And, and every time you go there, you're excited to see what's, yeah, yeah. what's new. So, um, yeah, let's get into the highlights for round three of the Super Series. It looks like we are underway and it is green. This is going to be very slippery going into turn number one. Nash Morris waiting in the background. He's got to wait for that final car to come over past the start finish line. You can see the difference in the braking, can't you, between our last race and this one where they're getting on the brakes a lot earlier, not wanting to carry that speed. but. I can't see how thick the rain is out there at the moment. I can't see it falling from the sky. And do we have more coming or will this dry out? And will the, I suppose the, the risk and the, the temptation to stay on the slicks, will it pay off? Because we can see dry patches starting to appear out in the racetrack. Could this go in Josh Haynes' favour at the end of the race compared to what we've seen in Nash Morris? Where it's going to be consistently a problem for the guys on slicks. You would think out of all the cars on the racetrack, the one sponsored by Features, Sea-Doo, would be the best in the wet, Matty Cav. Penalties coming oh. through pit lane as well now. Some penalties coming over the race radio for speeding in pit lane as they've come through to change over those wet weather tyres. So that's going to be a some provisional uh, results, I think, at the end of this. The booming voice of AVE main man Greg Sita in our ears as Cheney is gone. The IES car on the main straightaway. Right in front of the team, there is Walsh, there is Paul Hadley, the team boss. Let's have a look at what happened here. Oh, Rowley got loose. And I think Cheney might have checked up to try and miss him. Coulter, Hayden Jackson, the Maitland missile fires up the inside on the Cabelco Camaro. Oh, they're right there with Keem. Wow, two for the price of one. Nice drive, Hayden Jackson. Oh, he's really closing in now 
Jackson Rice in behind Young. New South Wales is Hugh McAllister. We're in the final corner. This is all he's got to stick it to the bitumen, and he does. Nash Morris heading towards the checkered flag. Didn't get flashy either. You notice that? He could have like stuck the tail out and put a bit of a whip in, but he didn't. Nash Morris will get the win. We'll go a long way back to the Beaches Senior entry right here of Josh Haynes, who's looking to put a move on the outside of Hayden Hume. And let's go. Oh, lock up from Hume. Josh turns it back hard across the corner and will do a nice job in second. This will really spice up the championship. Although Dylan Thomas should hold on for third. He currently leads the series. Well, we, uh, we spoke so much about Queensland race, we did in the lead up and the highlights just showed uh, not the, the venue looked fantastic, the viewing you got from everywhere and the racing that came there. So I can't wait to go back to Queensland Raceway as part of the High Tech or Super Series in the future because we just know what it holds and what exciting racing it can produce and how well supported it is from the local races as well. But our next round we went to Morgan Park Raceway in Queensland. So we've, we've got a couple of hours inland now and it's a very different track. We don't have the long straights, it's tight and twisty, it's a little bit narrower. Yeah. So when you put the TO2 muscle cars out there, you can only get them too wide in some areas. Fantastic little track. Warwick District Sporting Car Club do a great job maintaining that facility. It's got a bit of everything. It, it, it's got a bit of undulation, tight, really tight, one, two, turn one, turn two complex under the bridge there. Um, drop down into a fairly significant, so not really a, a hairpin, but a tight right-hander, but a fast right-hander um, right over the back of the circuit. And look, uh, the TA2 guys were probably getting a bit, uh, maybe in some ways got a bit hungry because a couple of them uh, saw a couple of uh, punctures for them, maybe grabbing the inside of the ripple strip there and, and popping the tyre off the bead. But fantastic effort right across the weekend from Jackson Rice. I mean, he's, his driving has improved across this championship magnificently well. Uh, and he just, a little bit, you know, a, a bit of a kerfuffle, I suppose, in that final race. But Josh Haynes again, you know, comes through to the final. Mm -hmm. um, magnificent drive from Josh. He had a bit of adversity. Uh, he had a flat tyre. He had various other things go on. A um, little bit of a, if you like, a, a, a little bit of contact in turn one, race four. Uh, with, with, if you like, uh, Brad Gartner and, and Jackson, a couple yeah. of other cars. But Dylan Thomas, the cons Mr. Consistency, oh. you know, just kept picking up the points. And, and whilst we haven't overly mentioned Dylan, we know that his car, as it appears in our backdrop here, that, that car's consistently in the top four or five, constantly picking up points. Uh, and, and I know we've mentioned Dylan before, but just doing the right things. I mean, uh, at Hidden Valley, you're right, he, he put himself together, or himself and Tim uh, put themselves together, put a plan together and they just executed it. Uh, when it came to Queensland, same deal, um, stayed out of trouble and just kept consistently getting through. And then obviously Morgan Park, he followed through again and picked up some great points. Had a really good battle with Brad Gardner who came back from that huge accident at Queensland Raceway to, to put in a great effort straight on the podium. Mm -hmm. So, you know, congratulations to the PBR team who are looking after that car now. But most importantly, um, the series just kept on keeping on. Uh, at, at Morgan Park, we saw the Queensland production cars again. They put on a great couple of, well, two or three races there for those guys on the Sunday. Um, and a magnificent effort for those guys. Australian Trans Am back again. And then Legend Cars. Legend Cars oh. joined us back again from, from Winton. So it was magnificent to see those guys. And Tony and all, and all of the team there at Legend Cars Australia doing a fantastic job. That series is actually growing in numbers and it's magnificent to see. And we're looking forward to seeing those guys for the rest of the year. Just an exciting category. Mm. They're a small little car, but they, they can spin out. They can, they can do two turns and then rejoin the racetrack and they've only lost about three positions. Well, that, it's, it's unbelievable how many times we saw cars spin around and not leave the bitumen. Absolutely, and they turn it on. Um, yeah. The racing, you know, when you watch the racing, something is happening every moment, every corner. So it's a fantastic series. And those guys are very, 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 if you like, executing it very professionally. Mm. They've got a couple of different engine uh, if selections that they can utilise and there's a new engine that they've got uh, that's water cooled. So uh, hats off to those guys. They are joining us for the rest of the year and we're looking forward to that. But yeah, fantastic little series. Oh, from the commentary box, it was really hard. There's a battle for first, there's a battle for fifth, there's a battle for 10th, there's a battle for 14th. Like, yeah. There was so many on there, four or five battles happening all at once. We didn't know where to put the cameras. I mean, and it's an exciting category to bring into the series, an exciting category to continue with as well. And 
I can't wait to see what they're going to do at Sydney because they have been there a number of times. So they're quite familiar with that track. Yeah, and look, and the other categories, and it would be remiss of me to mention Queensland Touring Car Championship and also Replica Tours. Both of those categories mm. have vast, just a huge amount of numbers out of Queensland. The cars look good. They yeah. hark back to a bit of our touring car hero. <laughs> so that's part of the, if you like, the psyche around putting those those categories together. But magnificent categories, well supported, and we can't wait to have them back when we uh, go north again next year. Well, let's have a look at the exciting racing from Morgan Park Raceway. Fourth and final race of the weekend for round four of the TA2 Muscle Car Series, framed by High Tech. Watch those red lights go out. And we mat it down into turn one. Haynes clearly got the advantage going into turn one. We take a look at McKellen. Oh no, Rice! We got cars going everywhere. Rice will rejoin in second last. There's gonna be more to that story. Quick look back at the replay. Oh! It looked like Gartner. Yeah, it did. Looked like it Gartner did. gave him a helping hand. And every, everybody's oh. everywhere. Genie ended up with a grill full of grass clippings. Rice up behind Paul Hadley. Slips by on the inside. Nice run as he goes by the Immaculate. No real surprise to see that there's a post-race investigation, a PRI. So Elliot Barber will have to take a look. He'll have to be... Well, Quincy, remember Jack Kluger? Yes, old, I do. You'll have to do a bit of, not an autopsy, but you'll certainly have to really pick that whole incident apart. Here is Jackson. Noticed a bit of damage to the back left yeah. of Brad's car, so I'd say that might have been a bit of a result of that uh, incident. Oh, wow. Jackson is closer and closer! Whoa! And here comes the move. I think it's on. He's got him. Does he wave? Does he wave? Gardner will probably give the corner up. <laughs> Smart thinking. Yeah. That, that part of the racetrack, look how much gravel has come onto the racetrack from that, from that incident. incident. Exactly. So round winners will be Haynes from Rice and Thomas at this point. So when you look down, there you go. So Rice has 221 points. He will actually pick up second. Josh Haynes with 228 and Dylan Thomas with 211. But what a job for his granddad's birthday. Fantastic. Alfie will be on the turps already, I'm pretty sure. And he will take the win. Jackson Rice will be second for the round. Well, now that we've had a look at our first four rounds of the High Tech Oil Super Series, we're going to move forward to round number five, coming to you from Sydney Motorsport Park on the 13th and 14th of October. And to uh, join us on the panel show, Jeff Gretsch is in the studio with us. Welcome, Jeff. How you going, lads? Jeff, how are you? Good, thank you. Oh, you've been around since the start of the series in a technical manner, though, but we're going to change your role a little bit now. Yes, I'm heading up into the tower into, with the stewards just to, um, I guess, help out if I need to. And, and sort of roll into that role a little bit more as, as time goes on. So I'm looking forward to it, to be honest. Obviously your role, Jeff, with the series has been about liaising with the, the competitors and obviously the category managers, but now you're getting into a bit of a judicial role where you start to experience what the Clark of Course is dealing with uh, on the race-by-race -race basis, but also being able to liaise with the category guys as far as maybe issues on track or something that the clerk of yep. course needs to deal with and then liaising with the stewards around how that deals. So uh, that gives you another viewpoint in utilising your experience so that the series has a really good balanced level playing field so that we can communicate and get things adjudicated quickly. Yeah, and look, the quality, the quality of the teams, the mm. quality of the drivers and the quality of the equipment in the Super Series is just outstanding. So hopefully... Um, Working with the steward, with the stewards and and Clark, of course, maybe just keep it on track. Make sure everything runs smoothly. As as you pointed out in the, in the uh, earlier forecast, there's been a few scraps and what have you, but makes it exciting. So uh, and the pressure's on. You know, we're getting to the tail end of the series now. Everyone wants to go better. Um, City Motorsport Park being a night race. We'll probably see a fair bit of action there, <laughs> and then and then the last round at Calder. So um, yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to it. I think it'll be great. We're joined by Legend Cars Australia again. I mean, we talk about the TO2 Muscle Cars, and, and there could be 20 to 30 of those out on track. But we talk about Legend Cars, RX8 Cup Series, uh, the FS4x4 Hyundai Australian XL Series. 
we're talking 40 plus cars. How do you adjudicate that? Like, how do you keep your eye on everything that's happening out there? Guess a bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you, you obviously um, working with the team up in the in control tower. I, I mean, everyone has a little bit of input and, and hopefully you get to the right outcome. That's always, it's always the best way to approach it. Not one, not one opinion, but, but mix and match and get, you know, some people will get it right or you might miss something and someone won't miss it. So it's about, it's a, looking over the whole, whole group a, as a group in the control tower and make sure we, you know, we, we get it as accurate as we can. I might just point out while we're talking, uh, a massive thank you to George Gambino from High Tech Oils. Uh, we don't mention George enough, but the High Tech Oils product and High Tech Oils Super Series wouldn't be where it is without George. Seen him at so many of the races, he's come to everyone so far this series. I mean, it's a big effort from him, not only as a sponsor, but personally to make sure he is there and really a driving force uh, alongside the Vanilla Auto Club in this series. Yeah, look, George has been at every round and, and um, his other, you know, his his uh, high tech race fuels provide uh, a service to the teams. So he's there working through the weekend. You know, he's not getting there to enjoy corporate or, or having a beer or whatever. Uh, he's actually working across the weekend, which is fantastic to see. His enthusiasm around what we do and the exciting announcements for next year are just going to be really, really fantastic for high tech. So although we're going racing at Sydney Motorsport Park on the 13th and 14th of October, we've still got our final round coming up in November down there at Calder Park Race at the end of November, start of December. Yeah. Now you've been down there. The, the track is up and running. Now this is a bit of a historical moment, really. It's fantastic to have it back on the calendar and fantastic to be able to facilitate an event there. Jeff, tell us about some of your fondest memories of Calder uh, Park. Well, <laughs> well, one of the non-fondest ones was when the Craig rolled down the, mm. down, down the wall. Yeah. Um, I hope... If, when we go back there, I hope I don't see any pain. I hope they've covered it up. But that was that was a moment in history. Um, but the other big one was when Brock won a night race there. Um, it was a Peter Brock trophy, and he won his own trophy. <laughs> but it was it was it was enormous win for him. He he really he he lifted for the whole meeting. He was driving superb that night. There was no two ways about it. He just creamed him. I think it was a venue that. Uh, Victorian motorsport, if not Australian motorsport, kept seeing as the regular innov innovator. You know, Bob Jane with his forward, I mean, it was ahead of his time in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, he had the Australian Grand Prix there and he brought out the likes of, uh, you know, of, of, of the current champions. Yeah. You know, Nicky, <laughs> Nicky Lauder came out, <laughs> various, uh, Roberto Moreno, Alan Jones in his Williams yeah. of the day. You know, it's like Lewis Hamilton dropping onto Winton. You know, it's just not going to happen, but it happened then. Um, and, you know, fantastic place for history. Well, a massive final two rounds for the High Tech Oil Super Series still coming this year. We can't wait to see how it all unfolds. We're going to take a short break, and after that, we're going to catch up with Nathan Hearn from the United States of America. Welcome back to the High Tech Oil's Super Series panel show. We've reviewed the first four rounds of this exciting 2023 season. We've got two rounds left. We've had a look at those coming from Sydney Motorsport Park and, of course, back to the historic Calder Park Raceway in Melbourne. But joining us now, an up-and-coming talent who's over in America racing TA2. He joined us up in Darwin earlier in the year. Nathan Hearn, welcome to the show. Nathan, it was fantastic to have you up in Darwin. Rejoin us all the way from America. Tell us... What was it like to come home and be part of the TA2 racing once again? It was awesome, honestly, Matty. And, um, yeah, I mean, just to get back home was good. Oh, I was there visiting family for a while. And, uh, and yeah, obviously got the, the invite from Peter Robinson to come up and race to you guys in the world's first TA2 two-driver race. So that was awesome fun. And, you know, we got to see some crocodiles and do some cool things. And, uh, morning, so that's something to be yeah, that, that was a great um, weekend. The yeah, TA2 awesome. series in Australia is what gave me my start. And, and it's the only reason I'm here today. And, and for all the people who helped me throughout the years, I'm still very much in touch with all the TA2 guys in Australia. Peter Robinson, still talk to him, you know, quite often. And, and yeah, it's a, it's just a great series. And, and to be a part of it and go back and see everyone. And, and I don't know, it was just it was good fun. And, and one of the weekends, probably that was a highlight this year so far. Tell us a little bit about your transition over to America, how that all came about and, and how it's going over there. I was on offer to, to come over here. I said yes before I even told mum and dad about it. And um, and then within, I think it was a month, I was on the plane and, and heading head to Michigan to come over here and race full time. So. We're all watching over here. Um, it's a pretty synonymous track, very famous. And I think I read one of your social media posts about the fact that you'd 
played that or looked at it and dreamed of doing it and all of a sudden you're there and you're coming back from, I think you qualified 13th and, um, and you were a bit disappointed but you've driven back through the field to a fantastic third. I think I think everybody had no voice over here as we were yelling, hopefully we were cheering you home but uh, how was that effort and what did that feel like? That was awesome. And, you know, Watkins Glen, it, it's had a lot of history, I guess, with me. Um, I remember growing up playing PlayStation and racing Win around Watkins the 2023 Glenn Championship cool. for Franklin Road and for Nitro yeah, Motorsports. Uh, Brent Cruz, Nathan Hearns off losing time as he defends from Nathan Hearns. I think Brent struggled a little bit on the restart with his car. Late, late excursion to school that day and I uh, got to watch Marcus win. So to get to that track was awesome. And obviously, um, you know, Starting 13th was a bit, uh, how you going? Um, we, we definitely deserved to be further up the field, but qualifying got cancelled because of a crash. Um, and yeah, we didn't get to qualify. So it was a bit of a shame, but you know, it'd come from Place. 13th. No need for heroics unless the opportunity the avails second, itself. But Brent um, Cruz doesn't yeah, make so that many mistakes. And I don't Nathan, think I, um, today, I saw you three, three years ago, three or four years ago, when you were testing at Winton with Gary Rogers. I was very impressed. It's great to see you making inroads over there in America. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. That was actually 2019, mate. I remember that test day, um, yeah, re really, really well. So in the TA2, then we had the 2021 as well. So obviously a very well win time of life. Um, taught me a lot. Every day I wake up and I'm living in Boston now and I go for a run and you know, I just think, you know, I, I never thought I'd get to this point. We had the Marcus Ambrose era like you've just spoken about and now we've got the Shane Van Gisbergen era where he's popping over to, to run with Trackhouse. Uh, Justin Marks runs in your series, so that must be pretty... Uh, interesting, you know, and, and he's obviously keeping an eye on talent and he, whilst he's competing. It appears to be a bit of momentum heading your way and, and that should help, that can help you over there? It could definitely help, but I think American motorsport as a whole is, is strong and you can see that in a lot of ways. You know, a couple of former, Formula One drivers, I, I can't mention any names or anything, but have, have actually come over to American motorsport and, and finished up in the European circuit and, and have been taking up all the drives. So it's very hard actually now to make it because you've got Shane Van Gisberg and Scotty McLaughlin and all these really, really top-notch drivers come from all the ends of the world to America. Well, Nathan, now you've had the opportunity to be in America this year and sample a, a bit of alternative motorsport and, like you said, had a bit of a go at Speedway. Has it changed your ambition over there to what you want to achieve? Um, September, October is, is advice I got from Marcus Ambrose to, to really put my head down and, and work hard and, and this is when you're going to make opportunities happen is in this window. So... For me, for next year, I'm focusing on getting as many drives as I can. It doesn't matter if it's in a home like Cell or dirt car or even a, I don't know, a Barbie car four wheels. It's um, I just got to get got to get some laps in. It obviously, it comes down to the budget at the end of the, at the end of the day. But um, I got some really good people in my corner. I'll just go back to the Nashville event uh, where you actually were in the lead there for a while. Uh, the two leaders got caught up with the car. Yeah, <laughs> you're not again because we could all see it. Uh, obviously, that was a fantastic result for you because yes, uh, yeah, the younger. A younger driver came from behind and got the eventually at the end there, but fantastic drive. But what a circuit! How unusual is that? That street circuit there. That was a that was an awesome weekend. Um, the, the track at, at Nashville was was tight. Like I don't think TV done justice. I was walking through there on a track walk on the I think it was a Thursday or Wednesday. There had a bit of rain. The whole track was dry, but turn ones gutters had been blocked and it was just completely flooded. A street circuit in a long distance race like that, it, it becomes very I guess. Um, mentally draining and yeah i got i definitely done a, a stephen bradbury and got very lucky um with the two leaders getting crashed out because they were long gone um i was, I was hanging on for dear life for as long as i could but uh unfortunately there was just too many laps in the race if, if they cut it short they would have been happy but um, unfortunately missed out so but it, it was one of those things that was a good confidence builder for sure um and, and set us up for a good walking glen and, and hopefully for a good rest of the year you're obviously living in boston so you're about to hit winter have you set yourself up to have a keep your fitness up during the winter so when you when you get in there next year you're you're ready to go yeah for, for me I, I bounce back a lot between uh, michigan and boston um, and working for, for how racing industries on the um oh, enterprise sorry on the ta2 cars and i've actually built a few of the australian cars that are coming over to you guys the, the fitness level and the and the, the training level these kids have over here it's it's crazy because you you see a lot of them and they're all you know athletes competing against that level of stuff and i'm sort of doing it all myself is, is a bit it's definitely challenging, but um, yeah, we're, we're chip, chipping away. Just for the people at home, um, Nathan, what's the biggest difference between your TA2 Trans Am car over there and the Australian car? Uh, what are the two biggest differences that you would say um, uh, from Australia to the US? But these cars over here, they're so highly developed and 
they're getting put on, on um, pull-down rigs and, and shaker rigs. So that's basically what NASCAR has. So a lot, a lot of teams have shaker rigs in their in cars, which basically they'll, they'll get data from a track um, using, you know, telemetry off the car, and then they'll put the car on, on a set of scale pads and they'll shake the car around before every event. And we haven't got that level of, of equipment. So they handle a lot like a, a two, 2013 um, Bad Supercar. Uh, so first the car, the future cars. I, I drove one of them in Morgan Park in 2018, I think. And that's that's why I supply these cars too. But they're just so hooked up and so fast. But if you if you go one percent over the limit, it, it's you're hanging on for dear life because that, they they're very cranky cars to drive. So so next year, Nathan, will your team be able to pick up a little bit of that technical challenge and and maybe get to a, a seven post rig and and do a little bit more development? The level is so high over here. I have to be on my limit all the time and. I think I've I've definitely learnt a lot about myself as a as a driver and as, as a person. Um, that's made me a lot better off. I think if I went back to Australia and drove for you know GRM in Australia or Dream Racing in Australia, you know they'll think, Who, "Where's Nathan? What have you done to him?" But um, yeah, you know I've I've definitely matured a lot in this year. So it's uh, it's been a good year. So. Well, Nathan, we thank you for coming on the High Tech Oils Super Series panel show. We uh, wish you all the best of luck for the rest of the year and going on to next year. I mean, you've got all the support. There's a lot of talk in the TO2 muscle car rankings that when we go to the rounds, there's always, oh, how's Nathan going? And we're, and we're reviewing things and uh, a lot of support from a lot of other motorsport categories as well. We thank you for joining us today. Yeah, not for sure. And I've been keeping my eye on the TO2 series back home as well. So it's been a, it's been good to watch from afar. But um, yeah, I, I wish I could go back home and hopefully I can make it to the last round at Quarter Park this year. Thank yep. you, mate. See you, mate. Bye. Such a great young person. Well, he's just not a driver. He's got a great personality as well, Nathan, and he's really fighting hardest over the America. Wasn't it fantastic to have him join us? Yeah, just uh, fantastic to hear what he's had to go through, what he's had to do to continue to race over there. I think it was quite interesting that um, he was talking about watching Marcus Ambrose race and running late for school. So I think that's <laughs> yeah. I think that's a pretty cool, oh, pretty cool story, and he's able to obviously talk to Marcus now. So I mean, uh, any kid's dream, isn't it? Really. Yeah. Well, coming up next, he's currently sitting in seventh position in the TO2 Muscle Car Championship. It's Matty McKeldon. Yeah, hi Matt. It's great to have you join us here in the High Tech Oils Super Series Panel Show, and uh, it's always exciting to have you in the paddock. And last time we saw you was at Morgan Park Raceway, where you celebrated a fairly milestone birthday. Uh, yeah, Matt. Thank you for that. Yes, I did. Uh, I celebrated the big five zero. I've uh, I've made it to half a century. Never thought I would, but um, uh, lo and behold, amazingly, and particularly given that I've been racing for nearly twenty years, I have actually made it, and it was great. It was great to share it with everybody. What's your scorecard look like? so far for this year? Look, I've been, I started this year with a really conservative mindset, finish every race. I went back and I had a look at all the different race seasons prior to this one. And if you finish the races, no matter where you are, you're actually going to be up and around that top 10, top five uh, at, at the end of the year. So I've, I've sort of taken that mindset and it's been really good. The car itself we haven't had a single drama. I think Marcus Sikanovic had a drama up at Darwin when we were there. Uh, that broke a throttle cable, so that was unfortunate. But those points didn't count towards my championship. So we've been able to finish every single race this year. We currently sit seventh in the championship heading into SMP, a track that I love, night racing. I think it's going to be absolutely sensational. So probably for me, I'd, I'd give it a six and a half strong seven, but then ask me again when we finish at the end of Calder. Do you really enjoy driving in this in, in series? Jeff, I do. I love it, right? It, it's probably for someone of my character, I was probably never going to go to supercar. So this was this was sort of the peak for me. Um, having said all of that, um, I can probably publicly disclose now, this is actually going to be my final year uh, in TA2. Um, but I love it, Jeff. I mean, uh, there is nothing that I have not done in this series that, that makes me think, oh, I, I can't give it away or I've left anything on the table. I've probably given it about all I can I can give. Uh, and, you know, for an old fat bloke like me to be up in that top five to to what the series is and, and how someone like me and Mark Crutcher and Russell Wright, you know, you don't have to be... You don't have to be a 16-year-old from the Lucky Sperm Club to be able to race these cars. You know, you can actually get in on the track at someone of not the smallest of ages and actually have some success. Look at Paul Hadley. He started racing when he was 50 and he's having a ball, the IES team. So uh, Graham Chaney, another example. So, yeah, I do love driving them, but 
Um, I think I've done about as much as I can do uh, in my category, in my career, I suppose. Uh, and so, yeah, this will this will be my final year. Um, but I've had an absolute ball. It, it's not going to be an easy thing to give up, but it is time. What is your wife going to do with you when you don't have race weekends? I don't know. I don't know. That's probably my biggest concern as to to uh, what the number one Mrs. Mack will do uh, when I'm actually home for weekends. Uh, no, no, no. Look, she she. I think a lot of people, again, particularly at my age, I think they get the feeling that maybe not the part, not the race team and not the sponsors had to tap on the shoulder, but maybe the partners had to tap on the shoulder. And I uh, I certainly haven't had that from Mrs. Mack. She's, uh, she is awesome. And in fact, she's as big a race fan as I am. So uh, I, she, when I said to her that I was probably going to retire at the end of this year, she actually said to me, well, what are you going to do? And so she's happy that I've got my little MX-5 to take me away and and do my little bit of racing. Uh, but yeah, she's she's awesome. She's a fan. Um, she's my number one fan. My stepdaughters come to the races as well. My kids come to the races. So yeah, it it it's been awesome. Um, the, my biggest concern is what I'm going to do, Maddie. I, I have no idea on a race weekend because you know I don't want to sound like a mongrel, but sitting at home watching the Sandown 500 this weekend uh, just just gone. Uh, I've got to find something better to do with my time than to sit around and watch supercars because it's a pretty boring two days. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go back to Mark Zakanovich. How good was it to team up with him there? I mean, the car did stop there. He got straight in the flag point. <laughs> How good is he? He got the shirt off. He, uh, he got the man boobs out. And he jumped onto a, uh, onto a flag and, and flagged the rest, of the, uh, uh, the rest of the event. Look, Marcus and I have known each other for 20 years. He is a great guy. His father is a, is a, is a character. It was great to have him there because he had, he had some uh, things to say about the car and what we might be able to do to it. So it was really good to have him. Of course, we share uh, a sponsor, uh, R&J Batteries, and the battery supply to Kubota as well. So it sort of worked to have us both uh, in that car. And it was a great event. You know, whether we do it again next year, I'm not entirely sure from a series point of view. Uh, but it was a great experience. Darwin's a great track and we love being up there. What about Calder for you? Obviously, you've done a lot of racing there over the journey of life. Going back to there, um, I think that that's actually not a bad little synergy for you. Mm. With all your experience of racing, you're going back to a track that has just been effectively reopened. Uh, and I did speak to another Stephen White friend of yours yesterday about that very thing. <laughs> and um, yeah. uh, we were chatting about Calder and, and uh, you know, I, I said to him, it, it's going to be great because there is a lot of things that make it an old school racetrack still, you know, um, and that's probably something that's going to be really cool. Maybe for you, you know, finishing up there would be good. Steve, it's a perfect thing for me. And ironically, whilst you think that I've raced there a lot, I've actually never raced there. I did work as an instructor with uh, with an experienced company. So I've done about 4 billion laps around there uh, in the icy cold winds of, of uh, the western suburbs of Melbourne. Um, you know, when you get there at 7 o'clock in the morning and, and you just can't see across the track because there's fog everywhere. But, I mean, how awesome that it's coming back, right? The, the, the memories that we all have there... It's such a great place, such an emotional place, and I think it's actually needed for that side of Melbourne too. Plus, I am a Melbourne boy, ultimately, so all of my family, all of my friends are down there. Um, so to finish off at Calder is going to be really, really good. The only thing I really hope is that down at the end of Turn 1 there, they do open that fence because I did have a brake failure there once before, and when you go whistling towards that fence at about 150k an hour, your life absolutely flashes before your eyes. So hopefully they're going to open that gate at the end there in case we have a brake failure. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm really happy that the Janes are having a crack at reopening it, the, the high-tech oil super series going back there. I think it's fantastic. Um, and I... I you may not have announced it. I may be saying something I shouldn't hear. Wouldn't be the first time. Um, but apparently we're looking at trying to do some night racing there even, so or some yeah. evening racing, which in Melbourne at, uh, at that time of the year, sun goes down at about 10.30 at night, so that'll be interesting. Um, so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, uh, I'll have all my family there, all my friends there, and, and we'll say goodbye to TA2 and, and uh, full national racing in style, I reckon. Yeah, we're definitely doing that uh, running into the twilight. I think it's something that resonates with the people that have been there before, you know, and, and the history of the place with Thunderdome and, and drags, etc., lends itself to the place being under lights in some way, shape or form. And I think um, night racing as a concept, which, we, which we're about to do at Sydney Motorsport Park for, for round five of the series, 
and we see it with supercars as well. It gives people the opportunity to get to a track. It gives people the opportunity to go and do sport with the kids in the morning, go and buy a house, do whatever you need to do, do your shopping, and then you can come out and, and uh, watch some motorsport. So I love the idea of night racing. I wish we did more of it. I wish more tracks were set up to do it. So, yeah, I, I think if we can get that done successfully in Calder, uh, it'll be brilliant. Well, Matty, it's uh, always fantastic to talk to you. We, uh, it's always enjoyable. We always have a great time, and I'm sure we're going to do that at Sydney Motorsport Park on the 13th and 14th of October. Can't wait to get there, boys. Jeff, good to see you. Good to see yeah, you about earning a great. salary. That's good work, mate. I appreciate it. And we'll see you all when we get to SMP. Okay. <laughs> see you, mate. Cheers, mate. mate. Bye. Matt McKeldin, a huge personality, isn't he, guys? Ah, oh, character. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, real character. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, good to see. And people like that make a series and make you enjoy when you go there. Yeah. You know how much fun it is and, and uh, you see a smiling face in the pits and, um, yeah, have a bit of a joke and laugh. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Jeff, for joining us today on the Thanks, panel show. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Make sure you check it out, hightechoilssuperseries.au for all the details. It's the 13th and 14th of October from Sydney Motorsport Park. Can't wait to see you there.